Okay, so in this video we're going to be discussing rendering settings. So to get to your rendering dialog, it's right down here, it's the teapot um, down in the bottom left hand corner. And that'll open up this rendering dialog. And initially you can see um, there's a couple different options here. You've got your render button that uses all the settings that you've established to go ahead and start the render. You can render a region. If I check this on, it gives me a little box that I can click on and then just render a certain piece. So if for whatever reason something goes awry, you render the entire image and you need to change something small over here in the corner, you can render that little piece and then Photoshop it into place um, and not have to wait for the entire image to re-render. Um, you've got the output settings here. So the resolution screen is basically, it's gonna render it so that it looks okay right here on your screen. If you try to zoom in on it, on your screen, it's gonna go ahead and pixelate. Um, and then for printer, if I click printer, I can select what DPI I want this to print at. And you'll also see that right down here, it starts to give me, where a screen gives me the pixels, the printer option gives me the actual dimensions of that, um, of that image. If I want to change the width and height, I can select the outside box here and go to size crop. And I can say, if you want to change the field of view, which would expand this just the same as grabbing this and pulling these little toggles, um, that's one way to do it. But if you've already set the kind of crop box to where you want it and you just want to expand this and make it larger, you can go to scale and say, okay, I want this model crop to be bigger than this. I'm going to get, go ahead and say, we'll say 15 inches and hit apply. And we'll say, okay. I'm going to turn region off though. So now it's showing you the 15 inch width and 10 5 eighths that I, that I just kind of set up there. Then we get into our lighting. So what kind of lighting are we using within this rendering? Are we using, is it an interior or an exterior rendering? And is, is it being lit by interior artificial lighting? Is it being lit by exterior artificial lighting? Or is it an interior sunlit? I would steer clear of the interior sun and artificial and exterior sun and artificial settings for now. Um, for whatever reason, Revit has not been able to figure out how to render both artificial light and sun at the same time. You'll get a whole lot of sun and very, very little artificial. So if you've got, say, a bank of windows on this side of your rendering, this side of your rendering is going to be nice and bright with all that sunlight pouring in and then this side is going to be really dark and it's not going to look how you anticipated it to. Um, a good way around this is to render an interior artificial and then render an interior sun only, overlay them in Photoshop and throw the topmost layer on lighten blend mode. Um, then you can adjust those two. You can darken or lighten one versus the other and it'll blend the two of those together and you'll have some control over how that looks. Um, that's the way that I do my interior artificial and sunlit um, renderings. I, I almost, actually I couldn't tell you the last time I actu I've actually used the sun and artificial settings in here. Um, so let's say we, we, we're using artificial only. Um, then it'll give us the option for our artificial lights and it'll show us all of the artificial lights that are in this uh, in this entire scene. So you can group things together. Since I pretty much know what all of these are and I've only got this one scene, it's pretty easy for me to kind of scroll through and know exactly kind of where where things stand. I have two different bars in here that were both rendered. So I know everything below this, these studio lights that are my, um, that are my pendants here are in the other, um, are like kind of in the other set. So you see, I've got a couple here. So as soon as I get beyond those, um, looks like that one is in the other one. So everything below that is in the other scene. So I can go ahead and turn those off. Um, so I'll get rid of those because I don't want to render with those on. That'll cause me to have quite a bit longer render time. So now that I have all those taken care of, um, just from experience, I know that I, I'm going to dim my pennants just a little bit. Um, I don't want them to be super bright. I want them to kind of be a little bit dimmer than all the fill lights and everything that I've got around them. Uh, it's just something that I've 
kind of developed with experience knowing when to dim them, when not to dim them. And you'll get the hang of that once you, you've done it enough times. So that's why those are on point seven. It's 70% of the light output that those lights are capable of. So then the background, you can apply an image. Uh, you can make the background transparent. That's great for, that's a, a new feature um, for Revit. Uh, 2019 where you can make the background transparent that's awesome for uh, exteriors when you're photoshopping into a site um, it used to be that you would throw it on a color and throw it on a white background and then try to get rid of the white and then Photoshop things in which was always a little bit of a pain <coughs> in these kind of um, uh, images I'll throw it on color and just make it like a dark gray or black or something like that Adjust exposure, we'll show that as soon as we, we get kind of a test render um, taken care of here. I'm going to go ahead and set it to screen. There's no reason for us to wait for uh, the printer settings and everything. That's going to take a little bit longer. And I'm going to hit medium uh, as my render setting for right now. And we'll see how this all kind of comes out. So I'm going to hit render and you'll see a rendering processes progress dialog box um, come in that looks something like this um, and basically what it's going to tell you is it's going to calculate uh, sort some settings and options for uh, your scene and it's going to say okay you've got 30 artificial lights and then it's going to say that what's the elapsed time on this um, on this rendering and then the level is how accurate um, that this image is um, for everything. So the, the higher the level, the better quality this is going to be. And the higher the level, the more accurate your materials and everything are actually going to end up being as well. So you can see on medium, I'm, I'm getting some okay textures. Some of these other ones are rendering a little odd, <coughs> but we're also not getting great shadow and details in our shadows and things like that um, so we've also got a, some reflection not real great um, this is a little grainy and this looks a little washed out uh, compared to what we've got over here so the medium setting is okay it gives us a decent idea of kind of how this is going to look uh, when it's all said and done is our lighting gonna look okay that sort of stuff um, I could probably use a couple fill lights way back off to this side so that this isn't quite so dark up here. But overall, not terrible. Um, so now that that's taken care of, we can either save this rendering to the project and it'll create a little renderings dialog, just like elevation sections, all that sort of stuff. It'll create a renderings option and it'll save this for us to access later. Or we can hit export and it'll export this image just how it is. Um, as a JPEG for us to use. So the just exposure option comes into play if for whatever reason, let's say this was really bright. Um, I can come in here and say, actually let's, let's say it came in looking like that. And a lot of times people will come back, they'll see something like that and they'll go, oh crap, I gotta re-render the whole thing. You don't have to re-render the whole thing. You can hit adjust exposure and adjust those things um, after the fact. So I can adjust the exposure value to a little bit darker and darken this up. Maybe the highlights, I, I don't want them quite that, um, that intense, so I can, I can adjust that a little bit. Shadows, maybe I'll bump that up to 0.3 um, and hit apply so that darkens the shadows up and gives me a little more contrast there. I can adjust the saturation, the white point, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I tend to adjust a lot of this in Photoshop. Uh, I'll get the exposure value where I want it, but the shadows I'll adjust with contrast, uh, the saturation I'll adjust in Photoshop as well. Um, but as long as it looks at least halfway decent coming out of Revit, that gives me at least a, a decent working starting point um, to throw it into Photoshop. So that's adjust exposure, adjust exposure. And then if you don't want to see the rendering anymore, you can throw it back to um, to the model. And you can always come back and show the most recent rendering that you did. It's not going to update. So let's say I changed out my pendants to something else. It's not going to all of a sudden show the new ones in there. Uh, but it will show you the most recent rendering that you've done uh, as long as you have not exited Revit. 
if you've exited Revit and you come back the next day, it's not gonna show you that most recent rendering. So getting up into the quality setting, they have draft, medium, high, best. It used to be the case that these were these were less than useful. They were great for a test rendering, but beyond that, um, they kind of increased all of the settings across the board, which wasn't always necessary, and increase your render time when you weren't necessarily getting a better quality out of it um, in the end. But if you go to edit, and so we've got medium here, we can say medium, high, best. If we wanna do better than medium, let's say we go to high, we can hit copy to custom and create a custom render setting. I will tell you that they uh, they changed the render rendering settings in Revit 2018, I believe. Uh, 2018 or 2017, I can't remember off the top of my head which year they changed them. And I'll be honest, I could not hate the new rendering settings more. I love the way they had them before because it gave me tons of control over all the different aspects of, of how this was going to render. Um, and I could also control quality levels on different things that increase my render time exponentially. So maybe on medium, the shadows look just fine to me, so I wouldn't increase the shadow um, quality in my custom settings because that's gonna increase my render time, but I do want the image a little more crisp so I can increase that. They've gotten rid of all of that now, and now you just have these really simple and to be perfectly honest, stupid rendering options. So simplified approximate materials and shadows. If we go into medium, you can see it's approximating materials and shadows. It's not doing a very good job of it. If we go to high, it jumps up to the advanced. Um, why, what the difference between those two is in terms of just clicking the button over, I don't know. I have no idea what all of a sudden changes between those that makes this one advanced and that one simplified, I'm not sure. And then all of a sudden our render level goes from five to 10. What the levels mean is unknown to me. Um, I have not seen anything that really tells me what a level 10 versus a level 12 is. Um, they just say that the higher the level, the better the rendering is going to be. Um, so you can render by level, you could render by time. Um, I personally find these two kind of peculiar because if I render by time and I say, okay, I'm gonna render this for 45 minutes, that's great. Render it for 45 minutes. What if it's not satisfactory after 45 minutes? Do you want it to still stop? Um, and if it stops in 45 minutes, you have to be there to export and save it to the project and everything else. So if I'm going to be gone for 45 minutes and I set this up to be 45 minutes and I'm gone for an hour and a half, like for whatever reason, I could have been rendering for another 45 minutes if I had just set this to until satisfactory. And then I come in and say, okay, that's good and save it to the project or export it. To me, these two are the exact same thing because you have to be there to stop it for the satisfactory portion. You also have to be there to export and save the project when it's done rendering. So to me, I would always render it on until satisfactory. And then when you come back to export it or whatever, you just say, okay, I'm done, I'm good to go. So if I hit okay until satisfactory, I'll hit okay and hit render. And essentially what it's gonna do is it's just gonna start rendering and improving the image quality <coughs> over and over and over again in small, small increments um, until I feel that it's adequate. The one issue that I see with, with this um, would be until satisfactory on a printer setting because it's really difficult to look at your screen and tell what that quality is going to be uh, printed out. So if it looks good on your screen and then you print it at 300 DPI and all of a sudden it looks blurry, um, that's a setting that might be a little tricky. So you, you almost need to play with it a little bit and see how long you need to render things 
um, on your machine to get to the point uh, that you feel like, okay, that seems adequate to me. So right now I've got this, uh, this rendering and you can see it's got the 30 lights, it's got the elapsed time, and it's just chugging away, going through one level after another, and it just says click stop when you're satisfied with the render quality. So right now, obviously, I wouldn't click stop because it has all these kind of caustics and kind of junky lighting. Um, so it's just going through and bit by bit improving the uh, the lighting and the render quality and everything else to it. So uh, you can kind of see with each passing level, um, the kind of white spots start to go away a little bit more and a little bit more and that sort of thing. So that's a, a brief introduction to rendering settings and how bizarre and stupid they can be, but also how to use them um, for different things. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and say, okay, that's perfectly fine. We'll use that. Why I would stop it there, I'm not sure. I'll never show a client something that looks like that, but uh, it's entirely up to you when you hit stop or if you set up a timer, then it'll stop on its own. So uh, that's an introduction to rendering settings.